filter cleaning. When it comes to a filter cleaning, never ever use this. This one's all about the air filter, uh, so sit back and enjoy what's coming up for you. I've got some filters to show you, we're going to go into in depth of what it's all about. I hope you've all got air filters on your bike. If it's a road bike, you should really be running with one, because this is what protects your engine from damage from particles. So let's go and have a look at some air filters now and see what the differences are. Okay, yeah. Uh, We've got a few filters here to have a look at, various ones, the standard filter, the high flow one supplied by BGN and various foam filters as well. Unfortunately I don't have any K&N type filters here which are basically a stainless steel mesh with a um, cotton fabric in between. The thing with K&N filters, I think a lot of people have stepped away from them for the reason that they have to oil them up. K&N filters are designed to have oil on the fabric to capture uh, particles and then uh, they're washable and cleanable. Uh, so people have sort of stepped away from them because they're, they're a little bit messy uh, and very maintenance intensive. So if you're not into maintenance, the best thing is for the standard filter in an air box. Right, look, most filters are a uh, concertina paper and they have like filtration of between 20 and 40 microns. So anything below your 20 40 micron range is going to pass through. But 20 to 40 microns is pretty good filtration. Unfortunately, they block up and then you have to replace them. This one, which is an upgraded one from BGM, which is a stainless steel mesh, unfortunately, it's got a filtration of 500 microns. Now, 500 microns, it's still gonna filter, uh, but it's gonna allow a lot more flow compared with the standard one. But more flow means bigger gaps. So 500 microns, anything below 500 microns, will pass clean through and go into your engine. People that are running these uh, T-strainers, well you can forget microns because you're talking millimetres across because they've got quite big gaps in them and they're not really a filter at all. They're just a stone guard basically. They'll stop big items from going in and damaging your engine which could be catastrophic. So they're worth putting on but they do obstruct flow because they tend to be very small, the T-strainer. So if you had a T-strainer of a much larger area, it probably wouldn't uh, restrict hardly any flow. But as the most I've seen are very small and they're ve ve not much bigger than the carb uh, bell mouth itself, so they do uh, restrict airflow. A higher grade airflow and more airflow, you're looking at getting a foam filter. Most motocross bikes use foam filters. When it comes to foam filters, the bigger, the better. The more area you've got of foam, then the higher flow of air you're gonna have. But there are different grades in foam. This is a Ram Air one, and you're looking at about 60 microns on the Ram Air. Whereas this one I've got from BGM is much higher and you're looking at about 100 microns to 200 microns. It's much, much coarser foam. That will allow larger particles through, but it allows higher airflow. So, rule of thumb is, the less microns, the lower the microns, the less airflow, but the more particles it filters out. The higher the microns of the gaps in between your filter, then the bigger particles it will let through, but you get more airflow. 
So, you can still, on foam filters, you can still oil the filter. If you use a proper, proper filter oil, not just any old oil, you can't use oil from your engine, for example, or WD-40, that's a complete waste of time, because it'll just run out of the filter. It needs to be a proper foam filter oil, which is sticky, has got high viscosity, it's very sticky and clingy. So it sticks on the filter and then all the particles will stick to the oil and then later you can wash it out, clean it, and then you're back to square one, with re-oil it and you're back to square one with a nice high flow filter that's going to take out particles because the oil collects the particles. Instead of them bouncing through your filter, they get stuck on the oil. But you, the oil has to be coated very, very well, mixed into the filter, not too much as it's dripping out. It just has to be a coating all over the filter so it's not dripping. And that will then give you a high filtration. Filter cleaning. When it comes to a filter cleaning, never ever use this. Paper filters are delicate and are susceptible to air lines. You cannot ever blow a filter out. Not even from the inside to outwards or outside to inwards, it doesn't make any difference. Oh, I'm blowing the dust out of the filter. If you ever see some, if you walk in a garage and see somebody using one of these on an air filter, you need to walk straight out because you're in the wrong shop. Okay, so when it comes to cleaning your filter, this is the process that I use. I've got a bucket of water, which I put in some fair liquid. So I've got some now soapy water. So what I do first, is a mild degreaser, right? Not industrial like this one, <laughs> just a mild degreaser on it because if you use the industrial, it can affect the glue. So you should always check your filter where it's glued, where there's anything coming apart anywhere. If it is damaged in any way, it should be thrown away and replaced. But this one is, uh, is washable, so it's a foam filter. Let's just go back to this one. This one you should never reuse. These are only a disposable filter. Never reuse or try to clean them. Right, so what I do is give it a good old spraying with the degreaser all the way over. Then gently massage that in. Do not twist or wring or do anything like that. Just massage that into the uh, foam, yeah, gently, without damaging. That will then release all the deposits, the oily deposits that have built up on the filter. So that's your mild degreasant. And then from there, into a bucket of fairy liquid soapy water to get rid of that degreasant and wash it all out. And then all the dirt should be washed out of the filter in the bottom. So there we go, a little bit more, give it a good old rinse. Right, now all we've got is fair, a bit of fairy liquid in there. So from here we go into a clean bucket of water and do exactly the same. Do not use a hose or any pressure or any airlines ever on any filter of any type. Do not ever, I'll repeat that, do not ever use an airline or pressure line or high pressure water on any type of air filter, no matter which one type it is. Whether it's a mesh one, whether it's a paper one, whether it's a, a foam one, you should always treat them gently, by hand and washed by hand. Then once it's rinsed out and you've got all the uh, soap out of it, you simply sit it out to dry and let nature do its work. Do not try to force dry it. Have patience. So that's how I wash filters and that's the way it should be done. Okay, you can use the foam filter without oiling it, but all you do is reduce the amount of filtration. So 
it won't catch as much uh, uh, deposits and, uh, and debris. Okay, just to recap, the standard filter, paper filter. Another thing you need to think about with paper filters is when you're washing your bike, always make sure you block off the intake uh, under your seat so you don't get any water going down into your airbox. Because once these have got water, uh, any water inside the paper, the paper will uh, not flow air through it. Because once you put water onto the paper, you literally block the airflow and it'll go mouldy as well. So they're really susceptible to damp and dampness. This one being stainless steel isn't and it's quite a really good upgrade. Uh, but you don't need to oil this. I wouldn't recommend oiling it. I should use it exactly as it is and just rely on that uh, filtration that it's got. The foam filters, exceptionally good. But they do come in different specifications for their uh, for their filtration, denser and less dense. This Ram M1 is much denser, and you can get multiple layer as well. So it, depending on where you use the bike, if you're in a dry, uh, very dusty climate, you might want to go for a double skinned uh, filter and oiled as well. To take out as much particles as possible whereas if you're in a normal say UK northern Mediterranean climate a foam filter is fine and you probably don't even need to oil it because it'll fill because there's not that much uh, dust in the atmosphere so it all depends where you live on suitable filters for you obviously if you live in the Sahara Desert <laughs> there's a whole new ball game so thanks guys, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, give me plenty of support. I hope my uh, little in-depth talk on filters was helpful to you and it gives you some idea of what you can use and can't use and what's best for you and your bike. So, see you all later.